Let's bring in our next guest. Nick Santiago is the founder and chief market strategist at In The Money Stocks. And Nick, it's good to talk to you on this Friday uh, because you've been looking particularly at the Russell 2000. There's a lot made um, yesterday when we saw that outperform uh, some of its equity gauges, the largest margin since late April. What does that tell you about where we are headed in the recovery picture? It tells us we're we're in, we're headed in the right direction. The markets are moving up, and when small cap stocks in the U.S. start to outperform technology and and other areas, that's a very very bullish indication. So I really like the Russell 2000 right now. I love the performance that it's had recently. If you notice, the S and P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and the Nasdaq are still below their September uh, top. Meanwhile, the Russell has eclipsed that. Russell has taken it out. It's, it's above the September and, and August highs. So that's a very, very good sign. I love when small caps lead. Uh, and that's what's happening at this point in time. What's adding to those gains in the small caps? Well, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of small cap stocks right now that are, are starting to make new 52-week highs. And, um, you know, there are some popular uh, cloud software names, and, and there are a lot of others out there. But one thing I always tell uh, everybody that I meet, I say, when the small caps take leadership, you should take notice because that's a sign uh, of a strong market. And if you recall, on September 2nd, we had a pretty a pretty good decline, uh, especially in the NASDAQ, which dropped about 10% from September 2nd to September 24th. However, the Russell 2000 had a very mild pullback, and it started to show outperformance. And even yesterday, uh, when the market struggled a little bit, the Russell was actually up over 1%. So I love what the Russell 2000 is doing. That's a sign of strength. And again, I'll, uh, I'm in the trade, so I'm talking my own book here. But uh, th that's a very, very good indication that the Russell's about to attack the 1700 level. The 1700 level. What's likely to be the catalyst, though? I mean, we were talking to Jimmy Lee, our guest, earlier on in the hour about what really investors should prioritize here in terms of the risks at hand. You've got the fundamentals coming from the earnings, you've got the election risks, and then the potential for a shift in policy if, in fact, we do get a new administration or we get what is some have called the blue wave. Um, what does your positioning look like in the face of all of those question marks going into November? Well, that's exactly it. You would think that the Russell would not be uh, performing as well as it is right now due to those headwinds. And I love when markets climb the wall of worry. That's the market's way of talking to you. A lot of people don't realize that. They'll just sit back. But when the market is outperforming uh, all the fears that are upon us, that is the market's way of speaking. And I think it's speaking volumes right now. I have no idea who's going to win the election. I have no idea if there'll be a blue wave or a red wave or any other wave out there or who's going to win the Senate, the Congress. I don't really know, but what I do know is the Russell is is showing out performance, and it's been doing it now for uh, just about two months, and that's a sign that we should all recognize. So I'm a chartist at heart. Um, I look at at, at these uh, technicals, and right now that that's the strongest uh, strongest index out here. And Nick, in many ways, tech has been sort of the safety trade uh, through these volatile times. Um, you talked about some of the the small cap names that you've been liking on that front too. Um, what are some investments you think that uh, our viewers should be looking to in this tech space? You know, we talk so much about the big tech names, but we've got some pretty big uh, IPOs that have uh, come on the market, especially in the cloud space. What are you liking in the sector right now? Well, I think cloud is still probably the, the place to be, but you have to be selective. You could take a stock like Slack, which is WRK. Uh, you know, it's it's not really a major performer like, say, Zoom. And, uh, you know, you're going to have to really go through the charts. You're going to have to look at the different patterns that are forming out there. But ultimately, cloud is still a very, very attractive space to be in. Um, I like to see it pull back a little bit more. I'm not in love with, say, the social media names at the moment. I think they could start to see a little bit more distribution. They're going to go through some headwinds going forward. They've had big, big runs. And then you have the popular names out there like the Apples and the Microsofts. And, you know, they, they, they've also had big, big runs. So they may need to sit on the sidelines a little for a little while here. And um, we'll see if money goes elsewhere. But um, overall, I mean, when I see the Russell 2000 leading, I, I think it's a green light for stocks. 
And Nick, really quickly, a name or sector that you think is really being overlooked right now that provides good value? Well, there are a few sectors out there, but one area I've been watching closely um, at the moment is probably more of the beaten up sectors. And, uh, you know, if you look at, at energy, I'm, I've completely stayed away from that. But that would attract me uh, if, if we do get uh, President Trump to be reelected. So I keep an eye on that uh, on a Trump reelection. If not, uh, if he doesn't get reelected and, and President, uh, we, we have a President Biden in place, then I think the solars are still the place to look for a, as an outperformer. OK, some interesting picks there. Nick Santiago, the founder and chief market strategist at In The Money Stocks. Good to talk to you. Thank you.